All right, let's get started with recreating the impeller that you'll need to work on for week 11 of our studio time. So let's make sure and open the example that you've been provided. And it is, uh, I'm searching to my location here. It's the fall 18 impeller sample that's based on SketchUp's 2017. So let's select that Oops. and open it. Uh, I have a newer version of SketchUp, uh, but I'll just have to recognize that it will be altered when I'm done with it. All right, so this is uh, a good look at the original impeller uh, drawing that I was made to replicate it. Um, again, it's got three impeller blades, and you'll see this. This make more sense once you see it in the classroom with the pumps in hand. This black section or gray section here is a ceramic uh, magnet that's polarized across its middle, north and south, and so it can be caused to rotate. Um, it does the hole down the center, uh, allows this to spin. And so a couple of things we have to pe keep an eye on is our redesigned impeller base is going to uh, make it possible for us to connect to the impeller blades down close because we're 3D printing them. It can be somewhat fragile when you're working with small items. Again, this is small enough to fit in your hand easily. All right, so first thing we want to do is remind you we are uh, using the scroll wheel. If I click it and roll it around, I can take a good look at it. I can zoom in and out pretty easily with the scroll wheel itself. So a scroll wheel mouse uh, allows you to do these things without interrupting commands you're already in to change um, to a the orbit or zoom commands. And so you won't need them if you have a scroll wheel mouse. All right, first let's move this and select it. It has been grouped, you can see that. Um, because the lower pieces and all this is one item and we're going to move this using the move command on the left select that I'm going to just pick any spot and then the color uh, pops up so we're going to move it over about three inches and if I since our units are in inches right now I'm going to hit three and enter and it knows I mean three inches I want to work on the main axis here that's why we've slid that over just so we can have it as a reference all right so let's get started with uh, drawing our first circle here, um, the outer diameter of the impeller blades is about uh, one inch. And so I selected the circle. I wanted to do is up to 60 segments if it can. I'm gonna do 60 there. Again, I selected the circle, typed 60. In the lower right-hand corner, you'll see it pop up, and then I hit Enter. So now we can come to the origin. It snaps to the origin pretty easily. Pull it out, and since it's a one inch diameter, we'll do a half inch radius, and the default is in inches. All right, so now let's do a line command here, upper left, and go from the center out along the green axis to the intersection point. I'm going to zoom in so we make sure we get on that. And I don't want to draw any more, so I'm going to exclude that. All right, so the next tool is we need to put some reference points because. Uh, the three blades are spaced 120 degrees apart here. We're going to use the protractor tool, lower left. Select the center, and we're going to put a reference point in. We're going to start on the green axis and rotate 120 degrees. And so if you look in the lower right, I've um, entered 120 after selecting the reference point, and then it tags it around. One more time, I'm going to click the center, choose an axis as a reference point, the one we just put in, and then rotate it another 120 degrees. And then the last thing I want to do is put a reference point down the main axis. So I'm going to use one of these and come back to that one at 120 degrees. All right, so now we'll add a couple more lines here. From the center out on the space of 120 degrees, we we're going to do this point there, and we'll go from this center out on the other 120 degrees. Zoom in so you can make sure you get the little X for the intersection. Okay. Then we should have all three of those lines. Oops. Do, 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 do. All three of those lines representing our equally spaced blades. Now, our next uh, step is to give them some spacing. If we look at these, uh, this, these have thickness, and I'm going to add that by offsetting uh, these lines. And we'll use a new tool. So we'll come in here. I'm going to select anywhere else, then come back, select one line, hit Control, and select the other. Now I have both selected. The new tool is on the le middle left, Offset. By selecting the two lines first, then selecting Offset, I can then click on those two lines and decide which way I want to pull or push them. 
slide that. So in this case, I'm going to come this direction and do 0.7. And I'm going to do millimeters this time. Millimeters. Look in the lower right, you can see that. Hit enter. Let's offset them. And now I want to select another pair. Offset. Click what to offset from. Tell it how far. 0.7 millimeters. Offset that. And then rotate around. We'll do it one more time. Select one. Control, select the other, choose the offset tool, and offset it 0.7 millimeters. All right, so now we have a few things to erase and delete. Uh, first, let's get rid of these center lines. We won't need those. And then I'd like to see if this is holding together. So let's, this is removing just that segment, so that's okay. This one is removing just that segment. What I'm looking for is for these to not be uh, to, um, closed off. And the last one, all right, blue there and blue here, good. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in on the ends of these real quick. Yeah, nothing sticking out there. Nothing sticking out there. When we offset those lines, sometimes they stick out a little bit. It was really worked well snapping these together here. All right, coming back in. We need to draw a circle for the center of our shaft here. So uh, circle, center, and this one is going to be a pretty small one. We're actually going to put it in in decimals. So 0 0.0596875. That seems like a lot, uh, but let's do that just as a precaution. Enter. It's too many segments, so it's going to use 24 probably. And we're going to do one more circle just outside of that at 0.1 inches. All right, so now we just want to do a little bit more cleanup here because we need these to be all one piece. And so we'll take this piece, this, this. And so you can see as I select it, it starts opening up. And again, we're trying to create one uniform piece all the way around. And so we've got that. So now we'll take rid of, get rid of these middle pieces. Delete them. All right, so now we have one of our three bladed setups. And it, so the sketch up phrase uh, comes, the up part comes from the push pull tool. So we're gonna sketch it and then pull it up. And today we're pulling it up 530 seconds. So five divided by 32 and that gets us that piece. One final thing on our impeller here, we want to add this flat surface. Right now you can see through it. We're going to need this later. So I'm going to add that surface back in just by drawing a line that closed the surface and then pulling that line off. And then the last thing I'd like to do is use our paint bucket here. And we'll just choose this color here because since we know we're going to remove it, I wanted to mark it. So now we'll go back to the select tool, back up. This is all ready to go. You can see it looks very similar to the original. This is the part you'll be redesigning. So I, right now I'm going to select all of this and group it. Right click on it and group it because this is the part we'll delete later and you can put on your own new uh, impeller design. All right, so now it's time to start with the um, base part that's going to be slightly modified from this small shaft and magnet setup. Because we're 3D printing, we want to make more contact down here at the surface. So let's put in a couple of the circles that are important. First, we need to recreate this shaft down the middle. So we're just going to pull it out to the edge there. And you can see it made a surface. We'll do it one more time, only this time it's going to be um, 7 32s. 7 divided by 32 is our thing there. I'm going to select this circle. This is another way to edit properties. Um, you can right click on this and edit info. And down here we can put 60, down here in the lower right, we can put 60 segments to make it a little bit smoother. All right, so now we've got this intersection and the outer section. We don't need this middle part right now. So we're gonna get rid of that, leaving access to this. Then we're gonna pull this one up. Hit our push pull tool. Select the surface and bring it up 1 and 1764. So 1 space 17 divided by 64. And that gets us up here pretty easily. All right, let's 
do that same thing. We're gonna, for now, we're gonna put this back in here and then put that surface back in there and delete it and also um, change its color because we'll know we'll remove it later. Now, we still need to add the slots for the magnets, which you haven't seen yet, but let's uh, use our protractor tool and create some axes for us. We're gonna snap in the middle here and go on the green axis to over here to the red and then do the same thing again from the red to the green. We'll need some lines to reference here. So having the axis up here is helpful. So now we're gonna use the measure tool. This, it also provides us the chance to build some uh, grid lines. We're gonna choose that. And what first thing we want to do is offset these uh, by one eighth of an inch. So I chose a line. Don't choose near an intersection. Choose near an open spot. And I'm going to do one divided by eight for one eighth of an inch. And I'm going to offset at the same uh, distance, one divided by eight, this direction. Now the other offset is slightly different, but again, we're going to do pull one direction. In this case, it's going to be, let me double check that. Yeah, 17, 128. So we pull it one direction, 17 divided by 128. That's because it needs to be a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch. And so 1 8 and 17, 128 is close. So we do 17 divided by 128, hit enter. So just to be clear, we'll draw a line here. We need the wider space here. So we're going to zoom in, look for this intersection point, come around, mark this around to this intersection and then go up and find the intersection point there. Do the same thing here. All right, so now we'll choose a slightly different color and mark those. Those are the ones we wanted. We, we could have done this segment and this segment, but they'd be too narrow and our magnet slots won't work quite work right. So our last step here is to pull down the slot. So I'm gonna select this one. We're gonna pull it down uh, three quarters of an inch. So three divided by four here. And then here's another interesting way to do this. I can see this surface, move it up and down, but if I pull it down and set it on the face of the lower surface, it ends up matching it, okay? All right, so last thing to do here is we need to um, select all of these lines. We'll go ahead and get rid of these. Don't need those construction lines anymore. And I'm gonna get rid of this surface, won't need it. And we need to group this top piece. We've got the bottom piece grouped, but we haven't grouped this top piece. I'm gonna draw a box around it. Right click on it and group it. And then um, the last thing is I'm gonna group everything. Now I've done this on purpose because it highlights something. So there's something we wanted to change, right? We still can't see through this. So that means we need to edit that place where we left the surface at. So we're gonna double click this. And you can see I the first grouping, double clicking first got me into the first group. And now I have to double click and get into the second group. And we're looking to remove that piece right there. So now we can see all the way out. So you click outside the grouping, outside that grouping, and we're back to this. Again, this is our finished product. Um, so if you create this prior to class, and then in class, we'll make a copy of it and get rid of the uh, base and start over with your own design. All right, so last thing, let's do an export of this STL file so we could print it if we wanted to. I've selected it rather than um, sometimes uh, students accidentally select everything and export it. Uh, let's do just the one item. So select your item um, file and use the export DXF or STL. The default units pop up. There's no need to change these. And then instead of polyface mesh, we're going to choose the STL option on that second menu. Now it gives you the chance to name it. Um, in my case, I've done this a couple of times and practicing. I'm going to put a reference three now on this one and make sure and include the STL extension. It doesn't automatically put it on there. Without it, 
uh, it'll file still be created, but it doesn't. It's not recognized as the right uh, item, and there is no option here to, uh, to choose the file type. So make sure and add your STL. And here it tells me I exported 159 faces. No extra lines were exported, but it did ignore 465 objects, and that was the other impeller that was in the drawing. All right, so that brings us to the end. You can uh, navigate around and create, recreate this drawing. That'll give you the skills needed to uh, draw your own lower section. You will not have to recreate this upper section. We'll save it and add your own impeller to the bottom of this one as you work with your team in the studio. Good luck.